Almost 6 in 10 mobile phone users in the world could have lost 5G connection because of a security flaw in chips made by Qualcomm. The flaw was recently discovered by a team from the Singapore University of Technology and Design, led by Dr. Matthias E. Gavellini, with collaborators from the Agency for Science, Technology and Research. And here's how malicious actors may have exploited the flaw. Affected devices could unknowingly connect to a station pretending to be a legitimate 5G base station. They're then hit by what is known as a denial of service attack, which results in 5G connections being knocked out. The only way to restore connection would be to reboot the phone manually or to reinsert the SIM card. Researchers say as many 714 smartphone models from 24 brands were impacted. They include Samsung and Apple, as well as others like Xiaomi, Oppo, Huawei, and Google. Qualcomm says patches were made available in August. It encourages end users to apply security updates as soon as they become available from device makers. All that flaw in security was discovered by a PhD student at SUTD, who was also an A-star scholar. Dr. Matos E. Garbalina joins us in the studio this evening. He is now a research fellow at the SUTD. Dr. Gavellini, thanks so much for coming in uh, this evening to join us. Well, this flaw, as we just mentioned, could have knocked out up to six in 10 phones globally. Now, we were speaking briefly before you came on live. You said you were expecting flaws in this, but you did not know for sure. So how did this process start in terms of your finding out that there was a security flaw in these chips? Yes, that's a very good question. Uh, because in uh, in the research, uh, usually we are when we are working towards finding some issues, particularly in my field, which is to find security issues in mobile devices, uh, regardless of the communication they're using, whether it's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or in this case, 5G. We we design some uh, some uh, idea and try to find it, but we're we're never sure. But uh, my work uh, during the the PhD years, uh, in particular in the this year and the last one was to focus uh, in finding issues in phones or other equipments in automated fashion. So in a way, there is a lot of tests involved, but at any moment, uh, things may appear as we'd like or not. But in this case, uh, we were able to find this, these issues in, in that uh, show up to uh, affect many phones. Dr. Gavellini, you make it sound very easy, but I'm going to probe you on this one. Now, your team and yourself, so it's not just you, but you, you tell me you had a feeling, a gut feeling, that there was an issue with these, uh, these, these devices from Qualcomm. And you use a process called wireless fuzzing as easily, as layman-like as you can. Can you describe what the feeling was and what wireless fuzzing means? Yes. So when I first started the, the, the research, uh, there is this particular uh, uh, very difficult issue of, of testing devices, whether it's wireless or some other or some other way. And the particular idea of wireless fuzzing is to try to communicate with the other device, but in a way that would make the other device misbehave. So uh, with my when we search, the idea was to move from many wireless technologies for Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, until reaching 5G. And there's a lot of tests and design of the tool so we could communicate in device in a way to make it misbehave. So However, make the recipient misbehave. Exactly, make the recipient misbehave. In this case, it could be a, a let's say, a smartwatch, or, or a, in this case, for 5G, a 5G phone. Turns out that those nodes they not, not only affect phones, but also USB modems, router, and other industry equipments that may rely on 5G. All right. You've also said uh, you can find this out, but there's no real defense for it. So the whole you find this out so. In advance, we make sure we update our software, we patch where patches are made available. But should we find this out? There's actually nothing we can do about it. So there's uh, some things that the user can do always beforehand. One is to make sure to always update their uh, smartphone devices. So security patches is always distributed by the smartphone vendor. So whether you're using Android or iOS, they just need to make sure to be updated. Uh, but in this case of this particular vulnerability, uh, if the user wants to be more safe, uh, it's always possible to select to uh, always, uh, only use 4G instead of 5G. So at the moment, that would be the best way to prevent against this attack is if you are concerned, you can disable 5G and stay on the 4G network. All right. Uh, now, you are in a very privileged position to do the kind of research, to have the access to resources 
and uh, I suppose talented team members as well to make discoveries like these and to confirm them and then also have a channel by which you can then uh, convey this to Qualcomm. So Qualcomm's reaction has been very good. I mean, they've commended you openly, publicly, and said you used coordinated disclosure practices. Uh, I take it this is a channel in place for discoveries like yours. Yes, correct. So I'm very humbled to be able to find these vulnerabilities, but one of the most important things is the way that we go about reporting the issues that we, we find. So uh, me, together with other six members of our team and also collaboration with Star and STD, we are uh, initiating the process to report the vulnerabilities to Qualcomm in April. And then uh, after they provide the fixes to other manufacturers, uh, finally they're able to release the public announcement in, the, in this month. Uh, yeah. All right, so in April, in April, right, yes, you, I you, you fed in April. the information back, and then this became public only in only in this month, in December fourth, with the disclosure of Cocoon. But before that, mm -hmm. two months before, Cocoon already provided the patches Patch. to other manufacturers, so uh, they could uh, uh, integrate the, the fixes for these vulnerabilities. So I mean, I, I've asked you this, but of course, I hear this, and there's a little bit of anxiety because. Cotton, of course, needs to come up with a proper reaction strategy. But in that time, in principle, you have discovered this flaw. We're all using our phones narrowly, probably not patching or updating because we're unaware of this. Uh, now, looking ahead uh, with the potential for these flaws actually to be any point, anywhere, in any device that we use, apart from just staying up to date with our, say, software systems, is there anything else we can do? 5G is everything now. Yes, correct. 5G is, uh, is the is everything. Uh, one of the things that as an user, there's actually, this is not just for 5G, but all, for all other equipments that we have in our home, there's not much we can do out there than stay up to date and take uh, countermeasure against it. But one of the things that can really help to, in the future, prevent more of those issues is to upcoming researchers to innovate with new ideas in the security medium. So, uh, so hopefully these sort of issues can be reduced in the future. But as a, as a user, uh, depending on the device that you, you are using 5G or another one, it's very difficult to stay safe against all the possible known issues. Well, it's difficult for us to stay safe, but for someone like you privy to all the, I suppose, high-end tech information on this, what would you do to stay safe? Final question. Yeah, so one of the things I would say, of course, uh, whenever I see a lot of e Uh, 5G for now, or at least change from uh, there. There's one mode called standalone on the phone. Sometimes you can change it to non standalone. So there are some countermeasures that uh, I would try to, to use if available in particular phone mode or equipment. All right. So some very uh, useful information for someone who actually does know how these things work. Thank you so much for coming in this evening, Dr. Garbellini, research fellow at SUTD. Thank you. Thank you. And so to come on.